hello so the next topic we are starting is a very very important topic for examination purpose is the calcium metabolism now the calcium is very much important because it helps in maintaining as you all know the structural integrity of the skeletal system of our body and of course it helps in the coagulation of the blood it helps in the activity of the skeletal and the smooth muscles so the calcium amount in our body is all is all about the balance among the intake the storage and the excretion so the calcium and the phosphate metabolism the formation of the bone and the teeth the regulation of vitamin d ph and calcitonin all these hormones they are related so the the balance between the intake the storage the utilization and the excretion is actually controlled by the intestine and by the bones and of course by the kidneys so if i talk about the total calcium metabolism in our body we have 1000 grams of calcium in the body okay the minimum requirement for the calcium in the body is 1 kg it is almost 1000 grams so if i talk about the distribution of the body so as you can see over here only 1% of the calcium is present in the cells and the rest is stored in the bones 99% is stored in the bones now out of this 1% as you can see in the next slide the 41% is combined with the plasma proteins for example albumin and this one is non diffusible through the capillary membrane this is non diffusible and not usable by the tissue the 9% is diffusible but it is combined with the anionic substances of the plasma and the interstitial fluid the 50% in the plasma is both diffusible through the capillary membrane and it is ionized also the this, so this 50% is actually responsible for the most functions of the calcium in the body for example in the effect of the heart the cardiac activity the smooth activity the the nervous system the bone formation all the functions this 50% is actually uh, serving those functions now the calcium in a bone is of two types so the first one is the rapid exchangeable which is exchanged between the ecf between the extracellular fluid and the bones and this will regulate the plasma calcium level the slow exchangeable is between the ecf and the bone which is 99% and this one helps in the it plays a role in the bone remodeling now the kidneys basically the kidneys filter large amount of calcium but out of this 98% is reabsorbed and git this is actively transported out of the intestine and it is absorbed in the blood the normal concentration of a phosphate is 3 to 4.5 mg per deciliter and as we discussed about the calcium the diffusible part the used part was the 50% here it is 87% and 85 to 90% is found in the bones and the factors regulating calcium of course the vitamin d which can be obtained from the diet and from the sun then parathyroid hormone which is can be obtained from of course the parathyroid gland the calcitonin which is also made from thyroid gland then the two major cells governing the calcium regulation which is the osteoblast and the osteoclast the sources of the calcium you all should be knowing about it now vitamin d3 is it has a potent effect to increase the calcium absorption from the intestinal tract but this vitamin d3 is not active substance to cause this effect it has to be converted through many reactions into an active form so the vitamin d3 is known as cholecalciferol and this is converted to its precursor in liver and then it's converted to active form in the kidney so as you can see here, see over here now whenever in our skin there's substance known as present known as 7d hydrocholesterol so once the uv rays it gets the the skin gets the uv rays from the sunlight so this compound the 7d hydrocholesterol the 7d hydrocholesterol is converted into cholecalciferol as you can see over here now this cholecalciferol is known as vitamin d3 but this is an inactive one this is formed in the skin now this is converted into 25 hydroxy vitamin d3 in the liver okay in the liver and this 25 dihydroxy vitamin d3 is converted 
into 125 dihydroxy vitamin D3 which is the active one in the liver in the kidney so first you see in the skin this cole calciferol is formed when the uv rays comes and it goes through the skin and it uh, attaches or it gets converted into cole calciferol by the 7 dehydrocholesterol then in the liver 25 di 25 hydroxy d3 is formed and in the kidney the active form and this active form is known as calcitriol this is known as calcitriol this is known as calcitriol the active form and as you can see over here, I have written PTH. So this PTH is governing the conversion of the 25-hydroxy D3 into 1-25-dihydroxy D3. So if the PTH level is less, if there is no PTH, there is no vitamin D formation. Okay. Now whenever there is concentration of the calcium increases too much in our body, then this PTH is suppressed. And when this PTH is suppressed, then there is no conversion of 25D3 to 125. So, when the calcium level increases, so it will actually suppress the PTH. When the PTH will be suppressed, so this step, this whole step won't be converted. Okay, this whole step won't be converted and there is no more amount of calcium formation. So, <coughs> the effects of the calcitriol. Majorly, calcitriol promotes the intestinal absorption of the calcium. So, it promotes the phosphate absorption, intestinal absorption of the calcium. It decreases the renal calcium. So, it is the effect on the intestine. It promotes the absorption of the phosphate and of the calcium. On the kidneys, it decreases the renal calcium and phosphate excretion. And on the bone, it it actually causes the effect of the vitamin D on the bone and its relation to parathyroid hormone activity.